Good morning. I welcome you this morning. I'm glad you're here. Uh, as we get started, a couple of reminders and announcements. Um, tickets are on sale for the anniversary dinner on April 22nd. And due to a generous donation, um, what we originally listed as a cost of $40 a ticket for adults it has now been reduced to $30 per ticket for adults. So someone wanted to make sure that everybody could come and that the cost wouldn't prohibit that. So um, please um, start pur purchasing tickets for your family. Also, the anniversary um, Berkeley Hills t-shirts. Uh, this is probably the last week that you can order those uh, in order to get them in in time for the anniversary. So um, make your order. Um, we're hoping people will wear blue to the anniversary dinner. Um, and this uh, polo shirt's the perfect blue to wear, so consider that. Next Sunday, we are hosting um, a synod-wide uh, worship service in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, we did this last year as well, and I'm hoping that you will plan to come and participate in that. It's, um, uh, there's special guest preachers and worship leaders. Afterwards, there's, um, there's a free food truck and that's run by one of our Lutheran congregations, and there'll be a panel discussion. Um, the focus this year is on uh, housing uh, availability and equity for people. So um, that's next Sunday at 4 o'clock. Uh, Easter flowers are up for order. There's uh, order forms in the back, or you can go online on the website. Um, those orders are due uh, Monday, April 3rd. And this is a nice opportunity to uh, purchase the flowers. You can take them home. Um, you can give them in honor of or in memory of someone special. So please consider that. It's a nice way to help decorate for Easter as well. Um, on April 2nd, we have a special Easter egg decorating event. Uh, this is more than just dipping them in dyes. Um, if you bring six empty eggs or ho like hollowed out eggs or a dozen or something like that, we'll paint them. We'll have lots of craft supplies so you can turn them into absolutely anything you can imagine. And it's really a lot of fun for all ages. So I hope you'll come out. That's from three to five. Um, so uh, that's happening. And then um, today after church, uh, Maria Schwartzbaugh is going to be in the back. Um, we sent out a mailing this week, and you might have some questions about that. She's uh, going to be in the back, uh, willing and able to answer questions that you might have about that. I think that's everything today. I invite you to stand. We'll begin with our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please kneel as you are able. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under the wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Please stand.
Let us pray together. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to invite our young people to come forward. They have an extra special uh, surprise for you today. Hang on, our leader's not quite here yet. She, I mean, she's in the building. Hmm. All right, let's do this, because uh, we're missing a couple people. Um, why don't we come back to this, okay? So do you think um, you can wait until I call you up again? And then, and then you can do our big surprise for everybody, okay? All right, that sounds great. Thank you for being patient. <laughs> we'll go on with our lessons. Good morning. The first reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 16. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on, as the, on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and he had beautiful eyes, and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then sent out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord.
The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 5. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the, to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruited works of darkness, but instead expose them, for it is shameful even to mention what such people do discreetly. But everyone exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. So I think now the kids are ready. So I'm going to invite the kids up. I think. We're still missing some folks. Where'd they go? All right. Really? No, I know they're here. Let me go check. Dang it. We really want to do this. It's so exciting. I don't want to miss it.
why don't you take a seat? Um, the gospel is like 100 feet long. Also, the story that the gospel tells is so good, I really can't add anything to it. So instead of reading the gospel like we do traditionally, I'm just going to tell you the story. Because really, it's just, there's so much to it, and it's so interesting and so weird that um, I just, it takes up the entire chapter, by the way, of, of the Gospel of John. Whole chapter. I don't know if there's any other readings that eat up, last week's I think did too, or closer, right? Um, huge. So, so it's about a, a, a guy who was born blind. Uh, and about his healing, but it's not really, if you watch closely, it's not really about eyeballs it, at any point. The Gospel of John loves to talk about light and dark. Starts the Gospel that way, go, shows up all the time. Jesus says, I am the light, all this kind of stuff. This is what happens in this story, too. It's a lot about uh, Jesus being the light and bringing the light to us. It also starts, the first bit of the chapter is that kind of prelude stuff, which is I'm, I'm telling you. It's right, kind of, it says he meets the, meets the man named, uh, who was born blind, and then a little bit of explanation. Who is to blame for this guy being born this way? And this is a conversation that, that the disciples have. He meets this guy, then immediately the disciples start in on and who's, did his parents do something wrong? Is God punishing the parents? Is God punishing the, the guy? Which is hard to imagine if he was born that way, especially since the Jews don't believe in reincarnation or the pre-existence of souls or any of that stuff. So how he's going to sin before his birth, it never really says. But who, and we do this too. Somebody has some kind of problem, either it's a physical problem like that or, or mental issues. We delve back in. What was your relationship with your parents? Or what did they do? Or what, right? Is it something you brought on yourself? We have this argument too. So I'm just going to get right to the story itself proper. So Jesus comes to this man who is born blind and says, do you want to see? And of course the guy wants to see. So Jesus grabs some dirt, spits in it, switches a little bit of mud in his palm and puts it on the guy's eyeballs and then says, go and wash in this pool of Siloam, um, which is like a ritualistic uh, bath kind of, kind of thing, uh, fed by underground uh, conduits and all that kind of stuff. Goes there and then come back and you'll be able to see. And he comes back and he can see. And so people start to notice. I mean, there's this guy who used to sit on the, side of the, on the side of the street, you know, with the dark sunglasses and the tin cup and the whole thing, and all of a sudden, now you got somebody walking around, and people are saying, that's that same guy. That's that same blind guy. And other people said, no, it, it can't be, because the blind guy's blind. He just kind of looks like him. And so they finally asked the guy, you know, what, what, what happened? And meanwhile, the whole time, they're saying, did he, did, uh, is this him? Is it not him? He's in the background yelling, I'm right here. This is me. You could ask me. So they ask him. And they said, how did this happen? And he said, well, this man named Jesus came up, and he made mud, and he put it on my eyes, and said, go wash in the pool. And I did that, and I came back, and I can see. So then the Pharisees, of course the Pharisees, get involved, right? They got to know this. The Pharisees are basically the experts on everything, and if you didn't think so, just ask them. Um, but but uh, they look at everything from an Old Testament perspective, and I mean everything, right? So what, what happened? How could this have happened? And so they ask him, what happened? And he said, well, see, this guy named Jesus came, and he made mud, and he put it on my eyeballs, and then he told me to go wash, and I washed, and I came back, and I could see. And, and uh, I said, well, that doesn't make sense, because how can Jesus, who is a sinner, um, do this? And so you have the, prof the, the 
Pharisees start arguing among themselves, which is another thing they're really good at, right? They're always in their face, each other's faces, arguing. So you have one group that says, well, it, this guy is, this can't be legit, because this guy is a sinner, Jesus is a sinner. <laughs> you know what the evidence for him being a sinner, by the way, is? He's working on the Sabbath. Apparently, making mud out of spit and dirt in your hand counts as work. So he's breaking the Sabbath, and so he, therefore, can't be an agent of God. And the other one said, if he wasn't coming from God, how in the world would this happen? And, and uh, so they get into this argument, and finally, one of them has the bright idea to ask the guy himself what he thinks. He said, look, it's your eyeballs. What do you think about Jesus? And he said, he is a prophet. Now, people around are saying, this does not add up. We're just not buying it. There's something weird going on here. So they drag the guy's parents in, and they interrogate the parents. Is this your son? Was he born blind? What's, how can he see now? Who made him able to see? And the parents say, he is our son was born blind, his whole life he was blind. We don't know how this happened. He's a grown-up, ask him. Now, the reason they did this, the reason they basically threw their son under the bus is because it had already been decided that anyone who was saying that Jesus was the Messiah is going to be kicked out of the synagogue. They didn't want to be kicked out of the synagogue, so that's why they said, ask him, he's a grown-up. This is just the most bizarre thing, right? It's like CSI Jerusalem. So, uh, so he was blind. He's not now. They said, you got to tell us true. It says, give glory to God, which in, uh, you didn't swear an oath to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, because the Jews weren't allowed to swear oaths. This is kind of what they did, though. They would say, give glory to God, and, that's, and that meant I'm going to tell the truth from this point, and he's holding his hand, give glory to God, and he says, sure, how did this happen? And he says, are we going through this again? I think he's probably getting exasperated at this point. I already told you, why do you keep asking? And then I think the snark comes out of this guy and says, do you want to be his disciples too? Well, they're like, no, no, uh, you're his disciple. We're disciples of Moses, and and God sent Moses, and we know it, but this guy, we don't even know where he came from. It could be Cleveland, as far as we know. So, so the, he's never given a name, by the way, the guy who was once blind, says, now, this is pretty amazing. You don't know where he comes from, and yet, I'm looking right at you, and I couldn't have done that before. Look, see? Eyeballs work. No dark sunglasses. No tin cup. I'm ready to get on with my life. How could this have happened unless this person were from God? The Pharisees respond very maturely. Get out of here, sin boy. How dare you teach us? We're the teachers. We're the knowers of things. So they, so they kick him out. Jesus hears that the guy had been kicked out. So Jesus goes and finds him, which is kind of Jesus' thing. People who have been pushed to the outside, people who are not accepted in the group, people who are considered to be just not quite up to snuff, those are the people that Jesus goes and finds. And Jesus says to him, do you believe in the Son of Man? And he said, I would if I knew who it was then I absolutely would believe in him. And Jesus said, not only are you looking at him right now, but he's the very first thing you saw. And the man says, I believe. Jesus then goes on to say this. I come into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. 
the Pharisees, these guys apparently won't go away. They're like there for the whole story, even though it's like got five different scenes in it. The Pharisees said, what, are you saying that we're blind now? And Jesus said, oh, if only you were so lucky. If you were blind, then you wouldn't have sinned. But you know what's going on. You know better. And so your sin remains. It is Lent now, and it is time for us, like we do every Lent, to take a good look at ourselves, right? To see ourselves. But in order as Christian people to really see ourselves, it's not just, oh, I see what a mess I am. That's definitely a huge part of Lent. But also to say, if I really want to look at myself, if I really want to understand who I am, I have to look at myself through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Then and only then, Jesus who died, Jesus who rose, Jesus who loves me, Jesus forgives me, that's the only way to really get what's going on in life. If you really want to see, if you really want to understand yourself, you've got to see Jesus. If you really want to see, if you really want to understand the world around you, you've got to see Jesus. If you really want to understand and really want to see the meaning of life, just look at Jesus. If you really want to understand, if you really want to see the meaning of love, look at Jesus. Get where I'm going with this, right? You really want to see, you really want to understand forgiveness? Look at Jesus, right? You really want to see, you really want to understand forever? Look at Jesus. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Living together as one body in Christ, we confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. Please kneel as you are able. Eternal God, you seal us by the Holy Spirit and mark us with the cross of Christ forever in baptism. Inspire us by your love as together we strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Merciful God. Creating God, by your word you have made all things, and you hate nothing that you have made. Teach us to perceive the beauty of the breath of your creation, from the grandest mountain range to the smallest springtime bud. Merciful God. Powerful God, you anoint kings and established leaders. Guide the work of heads of state, and elected officials, encourage them to lead with justice and remove barriers that impede the well-being of all. Please bless and guide those who are currently in war. Merciful God. Shepherding God, you lead us beside still waters and restore our souls in very difficult times. Keep watch over those who weep, tend who are sick, comfort those who grieve or are lonely. Merciful God, God our host, you fill us at your table with more than we could ever ask. Feel us, feed us with hunger for justice. Equip all ministries of this congregation and in our community to help others. Nourish us so we can nourish our neighbors. Merciful God. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
God does many things through our offerings. This week we give thanks for your gifts that support us being part of this community and welcoming friends and neighbors. Please stand. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this Holy Communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
please be seated for just a moment. For those who are receiving communion at home, please take your bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. And now your cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. For those who are in church today, the gifts are ready. Come and receive.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
don't, I, I'm fine either way to keep it that way. I don't know if that's so much of what you can do or how that will work. Yeah, but that's also, probably the same. Yeah, yeah, the normal way. Um, but I, I think that's okay. Okay, you tell me. Yeah, yeah everything's different.